So burnout, this is something I've experienced multiple times in my life as a student, as a teacher, as a stay-at-home mom, and even as a homeschool parent. And I do not want other parents and moms to experience this. So today I wanna to talk about the seven early signs of burnout and 10 strategies that you can do today to help mitigate that. And talking about burnout, I'm really hot here, midlife, <laughs> hot flashes going on. And my name is Sue Ann and I'm from the Homeschool Front blog and this is my YouTube channel, Life in the Trenches, where I share all things about homeschooling and my dog wants to go out. So one of the first signs of homeschool burnout is loss of enthusiasm. So I'm sure you, um, you know what I mean, where you're just, you're just not finding joy in anything anymore. You just don't want to do it. You're not looking forward to it or excited about it. And that is sign number one. So the second sign of homeschool burnout is, you know, when you are frequently irritable or angry, where you just, anything can set you off. That's usually a sign of your like impending burnout. So sign number three is when you're exhausted, even after a full night's sleep, you're still exhausted. It's hard to get out of bed. You just have no energy to do anything. That is another sign that burnout is impending. So sign number four is an overwhelming amount of stress or anxiety when it comes to homeschooling or just anything in life. That is another sign that burnout is coming. And then next is like declining performance or a lack of focus. When it comes to homeschooling, um, you're just not, you're not doing your all. You're just kind of dialing it in and you're just, you're just getting the basics done. You're not really focused there when you're helping your kids. Your mind is like adrift or you're just, I don't know, in a fog. And then declining performance, you're just not keeping up with things like you should be. Like if you're backwards planning like I am, you're just not filling in the pages. Or if you are a big planner, you're just not filling in you know, you're not planning, you're not putting in the effort to plan. So, I mean, if those are signs that you are possibly on the verge of burnout as well. And then next you start neglecting yourself. Self-care is not a priority. And I know there's some people out there that are like all oh, poo-poo about self-care. But if your cup is empty, how are you gonna be filling up your kid's cup? How are you gonna be having patience to help them? How are you gonna do anything if you can't fill their cup? Your cup should be overflowing. So if you're neglecting yourself, your cup is pretty much empty. And that is a major sign of burnout. And then the last sign is social withdrawal. It's where you're declining invitations with other homeschool families or even your own friends. And you know, that's usually a sign like you just don't have the energy or the enthusiasm to engage with those people. And maybe, you know, burnout, it's because of burnout. You're just, you're just tired. So now I wanna talk about the 10 ways that you can prevent or cope with homeschool burnout. All right, so I had to move into this room because my kids are loud over there. So number one is to schedule me time. And I put that first because I think that's the most important because you need to fill your cup back up. You need to heal yourself so that you can give to your kids. And that's plain and simple. What you can do to do that is to block out time for yourself, even if it's just like five or 10 minutes. I mean, I'm not asking you to wake up at four in the morning so you could have me time because I can't do that. I am not an early morning riser. I do not want to wake up before the sun comes up, the sun and I wake up together. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that you just incorporate some me time. So if that means you don't start homeschooling at 8 a.m. or whatever, that's okay. You follow your own family's rhythm. You don't need to follow the traditional school schedule. We are homeschooling. Homeschooling is an alternative lifestyle. So embrace that alternative. Embrace the fact that you can do whatever the heck you want to do. You want to schedule like the big rocks first. Have you ever seen that, I don't know if it's a parable or supposedly like a professor comes into a classroom with a jar and he's got rocks, pebbles, and sand. And he, at first he showed like, okay, put all the sand in and then put the pebbles and, and there, then there's no room for the rocks. The rocks, the big rocks are the important things. So instead you're supposed to put the big rocks first, schedule the big rocks, then you put in some pebbles and then you fill the rest up with sand and then you have a completely full jar. So the same thing, your big rocks. What are your big rocks? Me time. Schedule in your me time. That's a big rock right there, okay? Obviously homeschooling, that's a big rock as well. And whatever other big rocks that you have. F schedule those in so that they get done and you don't need to do like five million things 
you know, less is more. So just do one thing for yourself. Maybe that is spending 20 minutes reading um, a book, or maybe it's doing some yoga, or maybe it's exercising, or maybe it's just, you know, getting a cup of tea and walking around in your garden. Whatever it is, schedule in those me time so that you can recharge yourself and be in a better place. Okay. Next is to set like mini reset days. For example, like in our homeschool, we do like official curriculum kind of things on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So that makes not so much that we have Friday or Monday and Friday off, but those are kind of our reset days where we will do things that are different, that are not out of the curriculum that we're using. So we'll play games, we'll do art journaling, we'll go on field trips, we'll do, you know, exciting things. It's not the same old drudgery because who wants to deal with the same old curriculum day after day? And I, I mean, I don't want to do it. My kids don't want to do it. It's too boring. So add some spice into your life. So next is the 2020 rule, which is something new that I've been trying out. So it's kind of like taking breaks, like with your kids. Like, I don't know about you, but my kids can't just sit there for like five hours straight doing schoolwork. That's, they need breaks. So they'll work on something for, depending on their age, like 10 to 20 minutes, and then they take a break and do something completely different. So every 20 minutes, you look away. So you kind of refocus, you look away you look 20 feet away <laughs> for like 20 seconds as like a mini refocus. Like say you're sitting with your kids working on homeschooling and you're kind of, you're starting to zone out like on working with them, like stop yourself, refocus, look somewhere else, 20 feet away for 20 seconds and then go back and you'll find that you're able to be present and focus on the now which is what we need to do to be good homeschooling parents is to be present with our kids. So next is to incorporate outdoor time. So go on nature walks or just go a walk around your neighborhood. Maybe you don't live, maybe you live in the city, I don't know. But just being outside just kind of breaks that monotony of being inside and doing schoolwork. Go to a park, go on a hike, go to the beach, whatever it is, incorporate that into your routine. It doesn't have to be every day. Like don't like stress yourself out thinking that every day we got to get out and do something, but at least, you know, once or twice a week, get out of the house, go somewhere, be out in nature because nature has proven benefits of reducing stress and anxiety. It increases focus. And like I said, it's a fun way to break up the monotony of, you know, homeschooling or, whatever. So I know a lot of people are very traditional when they are homeschooling their kids. They're not as kind of la di da like I am. And so I encourage you to take those outdoor breaks to get outside. You need some green. So if you have the space for a garden, have a garden, go out there and look at it. Like every morning I wake up and make myself some uh, a matcha latte and then I go outside and I walk through my garden for like 20 minutes <laughs> and that just rejuvenates me. So it kind of, it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. I have some me time and I'm outdoors. It may be controversial for some people, but it's to simplify your lesson plan, simplify your homeschooling, like you streamline it. You don't need to do everything. There's like so much stuff out there that you could be doing and then when you're on, you know, Instagram or TikTok, you see all these cool things that other people are doing. So then you feel like you need to do it too. And it's like, stop, you don't, you're cool. <laughs> Simple is good enough. Okay. You don't need to go over the top. You don't need to make everything fanciful. You don't need to make, make everything like, um, Instagram worthy for your kids because your kids don't give a crap, to be honest. The only people that care are the ones spending too much time on Instagram or something. I don't know. Reducing the complexity will decrease your stress, will decrease your anxiety. It'll be easy to complete and your kids will love you for it because sometimes things that are too complex just takes too much time and your kids may not be able to finish the project because there's just too much going on. So simple is best. Simple is best. Less is more. Remember, we want to focus on quality and not quantity. So next is regular check-in. So 
um, check in with yourself that may be doing like nightly reflections and weekly reflections and monthly reflections and I did create like a digital download that you can get for you to reflect on your homeschool because I think that's one of the main things that is missing from a lot of people's homeschool planning is the reflection part because you need to know where you've been in order to know where you're going you know what I mean you need to know what worked and what didn't in order to move forward and so reflection is really important but besides personal reflection on about yourself and your homeschool also you need to check in with your family to make sure see how everyone is feeling see that we're all on the same page to see um, whether something needs to be changed maybe your kids are experiencing burnout and you're not realizing it. you're not the only one you don't have to do it weekly like monthly is fine or even quarterly, but checking in as a family to see what's working and what's not is really important in preventing burnout. Next is social support. And if you're an introvert like me, <laughs> this will be a little bit challenging because you know, as introverts, we, we enjoy our alone time. You know, we don't really need other people around us and we're perfectly fine. But finding support, finding other people that understand what you're going through. So, I mean, if you can find support in person, that's better, I think, because there's something about in-person contact that's just so much better. But if you can't, don't have that in-person, you know, someone you personally know and can get together and talk about things that you've been going through, then um, it's okay to find people online. I belong to Homeschool CEO Society. That's a great place for me to connect with other like homeschool moms that also are entrepreneurs. And so it's just, they understand the complexity of doing two things like that. There's also a lot of like other homeschool groups that are out there. I know that um, Brave Writer has their own homeschool group that you can join that has a ton of resources. All you have to do I, is purchase one of their products and then you have like lifetime access to this group. There's also, you can join a wild and free group. There's like, like they're all over the country, but you do have to <laughs> make sure you vibe with them. Um, if you know my, if you watch my other videos, you know, I have a hard time vibing with people. I think it's hard because you, it's not just you that has to vibe with the homeschool parent. It's also your kids have to get along with their kids, you know? And if you don't have those two things, it's like hard. It's like, why force it? You know, life is short, don't force things. All right, I don't know how long it's gonna last. My kids are screaming again. And so next is mindfulness and relaxation techniques. So deep breathing, yoga, meditation, prayer, whatever you're into, like do it because it's gonna help. I mean, it doesn't take long, you know? Like I like to meditate like five or 10 minutes a day and that's good enough for me. I don't do yoga every day, but I do it maybe like once or twice a week. And then just exercising for me helps a lot. Like exercising, like going on walks or weightlifting, that just helps me tremendously. And so using those techniques to help de-stress, to help you know in reinvigorate yourself is key to avoiding burnout. And the next is to set realistic goals. I feel like we're very idealistic, right? We, and the thing, the thing about ideals is like, ideals are kind of like the horizon. You keep moving towards it and it keeps moving. You know what I mean? And so we need to, it's okay to have ideals, but then I think we need to be more realistic when we're setting our goals. So instead of these big grand goals, you know, start with small goals, make them realistic and achievable. I don't like to make, year long goals. My goals tend to be like three months, like 12 weeks. Um, I find that is just better for me in my brain, um, having those types of goals. And then also, I know I've done a video about vision planning and vision boards, and I used to just do them once a year, but now my vision boards are kind of seasonal. I kind of make them with the season because each season brings a different aspect of homeschooling and we kind of need to lean into the seasons i think when we are homeschooling because homeschooling is not linear you know what i mean it 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 ebbs and it flows and it varies and sometimes you go really fast and sometimes you move really 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 slow it's just i think we just need to get out of that black and white mind frame where everything is just this or that because it's not because it's not <laughs> and i think when we break away from that mindset 
then we become way more resilient to burnout. We come, you know, we're less likely to burn out because we don't have those strict standards, those strict parameters. And the next is to celebrate the small wins. Like don't just focus on like the big goals and just only celebrating when you, you know, reach that big milestone. Like celebrate the small goals, celebrate the small wins for both you and your kids because that's what makes it fun. Just having that positive reinforcement and that positive mindset just, it goes a long way. Remember, we want to stay in the gain and not the gap. And so celebrating the small wins makes sure that you are in that mind frame because otherwise you're just seeing what you didn't do and what you didn't accomplish and it's just it's negative 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 so that is like a surefire way to burn out when you're focusing on the negative on the gaps so instead let's focus on the gains let's celebrate the small wins and let's beat that burnout because i don't want you to experience it because it is no fun there have been many times where it's been hard for me to get out of bed and i don't want that for you to experience that because life is short and we need to live in the moment we need to be present we need to be okay with changes we need to be able to pivot easily but if you feel like you don't have the time to work on any of these strategies then make sure you check out this video here about my time management strategies and i'll see you guys in the next one ciao